2023 Challenge Davos. This one is going to be for the middle distance race here. So without further ado, this race is one of the championship qualifiers. So the top six finishers in each age group are going to be invited uh, to the challenge event or the excuse me championship event so make sure if you are one of those top six you are headed that way uh there's a couple different tabs you can start here you can see the start lists things like that they also have a uh, roller ski event which is really really cool but going to athletes rules and regulations here highly recommend that you read this page it is very very important uh transition area may be only entered by participants and volunteers with id cards coaches attendants and spectators are not allowed to enter it is forbidden to mark your own position in the transition zone as well also keep that in mind here uh, you are responsible for your own equipment uh, pretty standard stuff there. The standard swim cap is provided by the organization, and they do say that the water temperatures are a little bit lower here, so they might require you to wear a wetsuit, but that is not totally solidified yet. There is, and they mentioned it a couple times, they highly recommend that you do wear a wetsuit, um, but you aren't required yet. If it does get a little bit lower, though, you participants will be required, and that's a good idea to reach out to race organization to make sure that um, it is or is not wetsuit mandatory, which is a bit of a unique thing this year. Uh, they do say bikes must be in perfect condition. There is a bike uh, service area, but they do say to give it a bunch of time because it is a little bit slow because there's a, a good number of athletes coming to this event. Um, it, they, in this race, the draft zone is 10 meters and is not the, the traditional Ironman draft zone. So something else to keep in the back of your head when you are going overseas to this race here. Stay to the right. They also say that if you do cross the center line, it is a uh, cause for disqualification. So that's going to be very important on the way down both sides of the mountain here. On the run, uh, it's exclusively for participants. No escorts allowed. Take your timing chip and make sure you hand it in at the end of the event. Questions? Uh, this is one of the other pages here. It's very, very informative. Make sure you head over there just to see some of the things that I'm going to tell you right now. So parking, there is three different areas where you can park. You can click the maps to identify specifically where. One thing I do love about this is it's all clickable here. They also say that it's about five francs for you to, to park there for the day. Check in and out of the transition zone. Check in on T1 on the start of the lake and T2 is from 9 to 11 a.m. and check out is 1300 to 1800. 100 p.m. Uh, finisher bags. Uh, the bike bag is in red and the finisher bag is in white. Um, so make sure that you do pick those up when you do check in. They also tell you to write your number on them so you can identify them easily. There is lost and found, liability waivers that you can read, a start pass. So they are requiring the middle distance athletes to do that. If you don't have a, uh, an annual start pass, you can buy a day start pass. Uh, and you can do that online ahead of time for 42 francs or 50 at the race venue. So bike service, again, they say it will take some time, so allow for time, extra time when you do come there with a problem. Uh, here is the expected water temperature, 15 to 17 degrees Celsius. Um, wearing of wetsuits will be mandatory or at least recommended. Pro athletes, there's information here for you. First place, 3,500. Sixth place is 500 euros. Uh, there is refund fee, accommodation, ambulance, award ceremony, categories for the middle distance, which we are interested is this one right here. And the start slash destination here uh, is listed right here and registration if you haven't already done so is their course information we're starting to get into the nitty-gritty here which is the middle distance right here so let's dive into that after we talk about the aid stations out on course which the first and third refreshments um, 
<clears throat> the second one is at the turning point all the way at the very end. And it looks like there's water and, water and ISO bottles as well as gels offered at the refreshment points, which are going to be crucial. On the run, the aid station is located. The aid station, very important wording right there, is located in the middle of the run lap, 5 kilometers, and will be run twice per lap. Um, so that is going to be very, very essential here. So let's dive into the nitty gritty of the course here. This is the swim right here. If we go back again, something to ask when you do check in there on race day. Uh, with this being the swim, they say that the run is four laps. The swim is two laps. Just double check that when you do get there on race day. The Dark blue area is the one that we are interested in here. This is going to be the start. You're going to swim around here in a clockwise position two times where you will exit right through here. Very straight lines over here, which means it's a really straightforward course. Water will be a little bit cold, so the start is going to be very, very fast, and that's going to last probably until this turn buoy that isn't ours, right? And then things will start to calm down. It will bunch up again at this turn, but at after this point in time, I am envisioning this race starting to spread out for sure. Once you make this right-hand turn over here, uh, this is going to be an area where you can gain a lot of time or lose a lot of time on competitors here. Once you make this turn, immediately make a dot to this other turn buoy right here. It's a 90-degree turn. Don't overthink it too much. Um, maybe you might have some sun to battle at this point of the race, but again, just think it's a right-hand turn. If there's swim caps in front of you, follow the swim caps until you can see that buoy, all right? If you find that you made a very sharp turn, you're likely siding off of this buoy, which probably will be an error for one or two people on race day. Now, after we get through here, we should be swimming away from the sun, which means that the everything should start to kind of even out. The <clears throat> early race pushers, they should start to kind of settle back into their rhythm, especially on this whole straightaway right through here. And this is going to be where you can make the first big jump or um, just kind of start to thin your group out right through here. And if you're doing it right, you really don't want to turn the screws aggressively. And after this first loop, in my opinion, you really want to just kind of maintain after that. So all the games can be played on that first loop to establish your groups. Uh, but after that, you really just want to kind of cruise for that second lap. Really, really strong bikers. You can you can make a couple of pushes here, but because of the sheer elevation here, you don't want to totally just blow everything and go out of control because we have a very very interesting bike coming up <clears throat> once we make this right hand turn right here you're going to want to start kicking your legs get your legs ready to work and honestly <clears throat> if you want to start that about halfway through or halfway uh through this last uh straight away right here that would be probably even more beneficial for you having the ability to have the blood in your legs and just not have your body to work to get that in there is going to be uh, very, very beneficial for you, and you're going to leapfrog a lot of people on the bike right away because of it. It is colder water, so you are going to have to work a little bit harder for that, so don't wait until that last buoy that you just swim by to start kicking your legs. That's not what you really want to do here. This is our transition zone here. We are going to uh, we're going to exit the water, hop on our bike, and then this is where we start the real race here. So this is our bike course. As you can see, this is our elevation profile. If we switch over to something like a ride with GPS, this is what it looks like in real time here. And this is uh, being in America, we have 5,800 feet of elevation gain. I believe that is 1,770 meters or about there for total elevation gain. And you can see here that there is a big mountain that we get to go up both sides of max gradient that we see here is 18 and a half percent which means that we're going to be riding the course something like this 
it is very on and off, on and off, and the very end we start to have some power production again here once that terrain starts to flatten out. But let's zoom in here so we can see this first mountain pass, and you'll see a couple of reasons why I told you not to totally floor it for that second loop of the swim. Right, The first loop of the swim is where you can have your fun. Second loop is where we need to dial it back a little bit because we only really have about 0.7 of a mile until we start to climb and we're climbing. It's going to come very suddenly and you're going to feel like it just came out of nowhere. It's going to feel easy at first, which means um, if you are having a high heart rate when you get out of that, that water, you just need to take this first half a mile easy. Let your heart rate come down. And it might even be a lot easier than you want it to be, but just let your heart rate come back down during this section because after this point in time, it is all systems go. And this is going to be <clears throat> about seven miles of, of hill climb here. Because of that, you need to be ready to rock and roll from the get-go. Um, and that elevation is just going to hit you very, very quickly. So after that first mile, mile and a half, right, we're already seeing nine and a half percents. It does go down. So what you really need to do here is you need to take those times where the percentages do drop a little bit. Realize you're still going to be climbing, uh, but you really need to take those softer gradients as an opportunity to keep the effort on and um, and that way you're going to get up here a little bit faster. And if you look at our best bike split data here, I'll zoom in on this first mountain and you can see that it's pretty steady the whole way. So this athlete's going to be holding about 210 watts pretty much the whole way up. We switched to 211, 215, but it's pretty much even Steven all the way up there. After that, we do turn or not, excuse me, after that we drop all the way down and go to the turnaround and speeds will be up. If you do a best bike split of yourself, this is a 225 projected time, I can tell you with pretty, pretty certainty that this is not going to be this athlete's time. If they go 44 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, I will be shocked. So more timid bikers, your time is going to balloon up a bit if you are going a little bit slower on the downhills to this turnaround. Once we do turn around, then it's pretty much the same story here. So make that 210, 215 watts. We are immediately going to hit that 216, 215. And so this backside is a little bit harder, but I mean, we're talking five watts average over the course of this uh, this second hill. The thing that I really want to highlight here before we start identifying some key areas on course is the turnaround point. You are going to be flying down here and it's going to be very common for athletes to be in a super heavy gear here. Um, and you're going to turn around and it's going to be almost impossible to start pedaling. So even though you are going fast, you might want to be in an easier gear. So when you do turn around, you can be ready to hit that terrain because you're turning and you're immediately climb again. So you have to be ready to go. Which leads us to the, probably the second key of the course, which is during this point in time here on the way out, you are going to be going very fast. It's going to be easy for you, but you need to keep pedaling, or at least have some resistance on the pedals here. So your legs are ready to work right away from the get-go. Because when we do turn around, this, these inclines are very aggressive to start this hill climb back up. So if your legs aren't working, you're going to really feel it at this point here. But let's back up. Let's roll the tape again, because after we do start climbing over here, we're going to ride these undulations. We're going to just keep that power consistent here, just because that um, the inclines do slowly start to drop off doesn't mean we need to drop our power off. We need to keep the pace and the power going all the way up here. Fuel is going to be essential. We are having a big day of 6,000 feet of vertical climbing here. So keep the nutrition coming all the way up. If we look back to our, um, <clears throat> our little map here, we have a couple of insights for us. The first one is this aid station right through here. Second one is this aid station that does happen right at the turnaround point here. So we do have three out on course for us. So the, these are all can't miss aid stations. This one, you're going to have to fuel up on everything that you took from T1 all the way to this point in time, right? 
Now, on the way down, we are going to be going fast, so you're going to be hitting these two relatively quickly. But again, I would use this opportunity to fuel all the way down. Depending on the temperature, you might want to have arm warmers with you, maybe toe covers, depending on how cold it is out there. If it's not super cold, don't worry about it. But if it is on the colder side, you're really going to fuel it during this stretch on the way out. Once you hit this aid station here, it's going to be a little bit difficult to hit and maintain speed just because we are turning around, grabbing stuff and going. <clears throat> but from this point to this point, it's going to be a lot longer than from T1 up here. Okay, So this stretch, you're going to have to be topped up or topped off, right? And if you wanted to kind of minimize some of the weight that you had on you, you might want to think about just taking something here and and eating it, drinking it, whatever, to minimize the weight that is on you, or take the majority of that water and have it during the first half of this ride up, because the second half is going to go a little bit faster. So during this course of the climb, we have about, let's call it 3,100. If we highlight the first little bit here, we have almost 1,200 feet of our climbing that happens here. The bulk of the rest happens in this section right through here, but you can see, and we can even break it up into three different sections here on the way back. First section is right here. Second section is right here. And that third one is going to be from there to there. Those are the three main little pockets that you really have to worry about here. Successful athletes on this course are going to be the ones that navigate some of these tight turns right through here. So just be ready for that coming all the way down onto the turnaround. When you do eventually make it back up to the top and you hit that aid station again, this is going to be another opportunity for you to go very fast. But if you do look at our map here, we do have some switchbacks that you are going to have to be paying attention for. So just because you are going downhill doesn't mean you can turn off uh, the mental focus. You always have to be focused on this course, whether you're going up or down. When you are going down, don't be afraid to look around and see who's around you. If no one is around you, you can use the road up until that center line per the rules, right? So the athlete that can kind of stay in motion the fastest, just like anyone that's riding any of the major tours, right, the grand tours, as they go down the hill, they're using almost all the road possible, right? That's going to be your strategy, but just on half of the road, right? So if no one's there, make sure you're using most of that half of a road so you can keep your speed high easily. When you are going down here, um, <clears throat> when you come out of these switchbacks, you're going to want to be hard on the pedals for the first two, three, six pedal strokes, and then you're going to want to settle back in. So even though you are going downhill, it is not going to be as smooth at the as this and you can see this right in some of these here I'll zoom in you can see this in some of these uh, little sectors right through here it's not all happy days just because you are going downhill there are going to be times where you are going to be forced to go on the pedals so make sure that you are taking food in on the way down you're trying to stay warm on the way down and just be smart with it taking our time analysis if we do increase by 5% here, it's no surprise that you can see we do gain most of our time on the uphill sections with this one being our most advantageous out on course in terms of overall time savings. Just keep in mind that that is an eight minute segment. This segment right through here, five and a half seconds, we, that's only a two minute segment. You definitely wanna target that one. And probably this one to start the climb here. That is probably going to be where you're going to gain some easy seconds on athletes for that second climb back up to the top of the mountain there. And the, the last real major one, and I usually don't do this, right? But the last major one that you want to target is, believe it or not, this this bigger section in the first five miles. The reason for that is because you can escape a major group if they are all just kind of getting ready to go. And if you get up the row with a couple of like-minded individuals, you'll be surprised even though you are 10 meters behind or in front of someone else, the power of being in a group is. If you are with three or four people who are just ready to rock and roll, I would stick with them. You know, at least keep them in your eyesight on the way up. If you are not as good of an 
uh, climbers they are. Just keep them in your sight, and if you are a better descender, reel them in on the way down. Watch those switchbacks. Always, always, always pay attention. But overall here... If we are going to go 5% faster here, we do gain about 5 minutes here. Uh, a little bit more, right? <clears throat> and you can also see the last other section that I didn't talk about. You ha It happens in the last couple of miles here. Second and a half here, second and a half there, right? So that is an easy, easy section. As it plays out right now with our power plan, you can watch our little guy out in the, in the bottom right. As we go over the course, we are going to start out with a cross tailwind all the way up which would be very beneficial right and that's going to kind of carry us and slowly start to turn right but it's going to remain a major crosswind for the most part all the way out when we turn things get a little more interesting we're coming back with a crosswind on the wrong side of the bike at the wrong time of the race it's the probably the most hard the most difficult time of the race here and we're having a crosswind coming from the right. So that's going to make it doubly difficult through this section here. And the wind that we do have, I'll show you what it's projected to be at in a minute or what is typical there. But as we start to climb up, then the wind does slowly start to come back around. Uh, but we do have much of a headwind. It's more than on the way out. Uh, and let's go to what is projected here. So this wind is going to be about four or five miles an hour as is typical and of course it's probably going to be different on race day but just something to factor in for you and that's the bike in a nutshell here and now we go on to the run so the run here for our middle distance athletes is four loops okay four loops and it's going to be a little bit easier if i scroll down and show you t2 here t2 you're going to ride your bike in on this green line you're going to dock your bike, get your run stuff out, and you are going to go out the out section where you are going to be officially on the run course. Another area that is very going to – that's terrible, but another, another area that is crucial for you to hit is this aid station right here. I know it's in transition. You might just – not be totally there yet uh, coming off of the bike, but you do need to hit that aid station and get yourself ready to rock and roll. That's an easy aid station to miss. Please, please, please do not do that. So on our run here, our run course is pretty boring uh, in terms of elevation. We had most of our elevation happen on the, on the bike. We do have the exception of one little hill that happens right through here at the second kilometer, right at the bottom of our course right through there. Um, and so, because of that, we kind of have free reign to kind of attack this if you want to. And since it is in four laps, I highly encourage you to view it as, as four different courses here. So that first lap, you really want to get your legs set, get them back underneath you. The athletes who really coasted all the way down that second time into transition are going to have a very hard time with this. Okay, their legs are probably not going to be working very well. So when you are coming back to the transition area, you want to be pedaling. You want to have some resistance on the pedals as you get closer and closer to transition. And it's going to feel like you're doing things backwards. Okay, but just keep pedaling, keep putting the power down and just stay nice and even so your legs are ready to rock and roll just like the swim. We don't want to overdo it, right? But if we totally underdo it on the way back in, um, then you're going to have real problems for the first three or four K out here. So that first loop, you're going to want to get things underneath you. It is three miles there, so we are going to, as we start to approach the back half of our first loop right through here, you're going to need to start running at your goal pace. right? So for lap two and lap three, right, you really want to hit your goal pace. You really want to be there by the time, I mean, let's call it, once you get to that third K marker on the first loop, you should be already at your goal speed. Um, and for lap two and three, you really want to hold that. For lap four, or as you get close to the start of lap four, then you do want to pick up the pace a little if possible. If you're with a group of people, right, you're, want to, you're going to want to make those moves probably on the second loop here. And now that I've said that, you know, if you want to change your strategy and go totally crazy, 
now that this is going to be on the, the World Wide Web, uh, you can definitely do that as well. But the smart person is going to be one that is fueling actively. They say that you are going to be able to hit this aid station on both sides. I would ask that question when you do check in. And one thing I forgot to mention was the race briefings look like they're going to be on Facebook, right? I think they're in a couple different languages. So you have the ability to watch those anywhere. So make sure you check those out. And that would be a question that I would ask right there also if the aid station is going to be accessible right here on every lap or if that is just exiting transition to be another smart question to ask and so uh an easy easy race tactic here a lazy one is going to be to just steadily ramp up and steadily increase and slowly get faster as you go here a more aggressive one is going to be to start out kind of as we talked about, and then that second and third loop, you're going to put the hammer down, and that fourth loop, you're just going to hang on, okay? So depending on where you are in your race, you're going to have to employ different tactics here. If you do want to get away from someone, the easiest place to do that is going to be on the back section here. This on the way out, you have major sight lines and you're going to be able to see people very easily, right? On this back section, there's a lot of twists, a lot of turns. You're going to have a lot of opportunities to just not be able to be seen by someone if you do make a move. If someone makes a move on you, then it's going to be mentally tough to stay with that because you won't be able to see them and it will feel like they are super far ahead of you even though they could potentially not be all right so don't let that play in the back of your mind and just realize if you are a professional uh, as a weaker runner could be baiting you a little bit on this back section here on the way out to start and then also on every loop when you get back here they could be it could be a little game that they play with you to go harder during this bottom section right so they get away with you and then you spend a whole lot more energy trying to catch them and they're just kind of cruising on this back section so just be aware of the little cat and mouse games that can be played on this course but overall it's going to be a great day i wish good luck to everybody if you have any questions about it please let me know and i'll be happy to talk to you about it individually good luck everybody